Today on Beer TV Refax, it's the two part calculator. Hi, I'm Ryan, your host of Beers TV. Refax is all about a quick, straight to the point answer. Those questions reefers ask all the time. Today we answer how do I use the two part calcium and alkalinity reef calculator? The calculator is something almost every BRS two-part user should have run into at some time, if not used weekly or monthly for correcting tank or even freshly milked salt water. The calculator is just a simple tool where you can enter your levels, what you want them to be, and it will instantly tell you how much to use to achieve that. It's simple, accurate, pretty straightforward, but we get enough questions that I thought it would be valuable to create a permanent resource on how to use it correctly. We're going to walk through all three, calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium, starting with calcium. First step is open the calculator, which is found in the header of the BRS website, then select calcium. There are three options. 99% of you are going to select liquid calcium chloride, which is the primary recipe and what is in the instructions and on the packaging. Just for reference, the liquid solution is 2.5 cups of the pharma grade calcium chloride with enough RODI water to fill a gallon jug. If you want to measure, there are single use pouches as well. There are two other options in the drop down. One is if you want to measure a small amount of dry calcium chloride like in grams and then mix it with water prior to use, but almost no one does that. There's also an option for an alternative recipe that less than 1% of reefers use because it's half as potent. If you're already using that, you know it's you. When we get to the alkalinity portion, it'll be a bit clearer as to why a small minority may use this. So select the liquid calcium chloride, then under type there are two options. The new pharma pouch, which are the bags that look like this. And what most of you are using now, the discontinued jug option, is an older pinch grip jug, which we haven't sold in a while, but the nature of selling in bulk is there's still a lot of reefers out there that have it, so we'll probably leave it up there for a couple of years. Most of you will select the new pharma pouch. After that, enter your system water volume, which is your tank plus your sump minus rock and sand. Don't get too hung up on this. All you need to be is somewhat close. If you're off by 10% and wanted to change calcium 40 points, it'd only be off by four points, one way or the other, which is both meaningless and not something you can even accurately measure with a hobby grade test kit. I'm gonna enter 100 gallons as an example tank. Now we move on to the important part, your current calcium level and your goal calcium level. Let's say our current calcium level is 380 and we want it to be 420. I'd enter 380 in the first field and 420 in the next and then hit calculate. They'll tell me I need exactly 409 milliliters of solution to achieve that along with some instructions. One of the instructions notes we shouldn't raise the calcium levels more than 50 parts per million in a single day, and that's probably wise to adhere to. In this case, we're only raising 40 parts per million, so it's okay to add all 409 milliliters at once to a high flow area of the tank, like directly into a powerhead stream. Give it 20 minutes or so to circulate and you should be able to test and confirm the levels are now 420 or whatever your goal is. Keep in mind that hobby grade test kits are probably only accurate to 10 parts per million or so and likely 20 parts per million if you're kind of loose as to how you perform them or don't follow the procedure exactly or clean the utensils well between uses. So don't get hung up if it isn't exact. The absolute accuracy is critical to you. I'd either perform the test two to three times and average them or consider averaging multiple test kit brands, but I don't think most people are going to find enough value from that to justify the increased accuracy. So that's pretty straightforward for the most part. Let's walk through the alkalinity as well. Hit the calculator, this time alkalinity in the drop down. There are four options this time, two liquids and two dry. Again, the dry means you'd be weighing grams of the alkalinity powders and then dissolving them in water prior to dosing, which almost no one does. It's just easier to have a pre-mixed jug of solution on hand, so we're going to focus on those two options. First is liquid soda ash or sodium carbonate. The second is liquid sodium bicarbonate, which is essentially baking soda. Both are acceptable but have unique uses. The liquid soda ash is what almost everyone has on hand because it's what comes with the two-part kit. And because of that, that's what most people will use. The only downside of this is the soda ash has an intentional elevation effect on the pH of the tank, which is ideal for smaller daily doses, but less ideal for larger corrections like a whole DKH in a single dose. The soda ash solution just needs to be added slow and can also raise the pH of the tank more than you want with larger doses as well. For that reason, while it's not required, I think it's a good idea to have a solution of liquid sodium bicarbonate on hand as well. The sodium bicarbonate solution has a very limited effect on pH and because of that, a much better choice for larger periodic changes like we're doing today. Most people don't use bicarbonate for daily doses because it's half as potent and doesn't have the desirable daily increase in pH. If for some reason you are part of the 1% that uses the sodium bicarbonate solution for your daily two-part dose, even though it's half as potent and doesn't have the pH increase, that is where it connects back to the alternative recipe for the calcium solution that we mentioned earlier. 
For all these reasons, I strongly suggest that two-part users actually have a jug of both on hand, the soda ash for daily dosing and the sodium bicarbonate for larger periodic corrections to the tank or salt mix. In a pinch, you could just use a box of food-grade baking soda for the sodium bicarbonate, but the farmer-grade single-use pouches are the most popular. Most people don't need a larger size just because a single gallon will likely last you the entire year if it's only used for periodic corrections. So with that in mind, select the one that you have on hand. Both will work just fine. Again, for reference, to make the solution, soda ash version is two and a third household measuring cups of uh, BRS Pharma soda ash and enough RODI water to make a gallon of solution. The sodium bicarbonate version is one household measuring cup and two tablespoons of BRS Pharma sodium bicarbonate with enough RODI water to make a gallon of solution or roughly fill a gallon sized jug. I would note that if you use half as much powder here, and it's half as potent because only so much bicarb will dissolve in water. For today's video, we're gonna select soda ash because it's what 90% of you have mixed already and on hand, the new pharma pouch, and then enter the desired system parameters. I'll select 100 gallons again, say my current alkalinity is 7.5 and my desired alkalinity is 8.5. Most of you are measuring in DKH, but if you're using some other type of measurement for alkalinity, make sure to change the drop down. Hit calculate and it says we need 71 milliliters of liquid soda ash to raise the tank's alkalinity from 7.5 to 8.5. In the case of alkalinity, it's super important that you pour it in slowly in a high flow area of the tank. When I say high flow, I mean directly into the intake of a power head so it disperses as rapidly as possible. It's totally normal to see a white cloud, but it should dissipate fairly rapidly and not be visible within a minute or two. If it lasts longer, I would pour it in slower or to a higher flow area of the tank. Because it does raise the pH of the tank, you might want to monitor pH if your correction is over, say, 1 dKH or more. This is another area where you can see some benefits from using the liquid sodium bicarbonate for these larger periodic alkalinity corrections. Because the bicarb solution pH is close to the tank, you won't see that white poof and you can add it faster and not just be as concerned about finding the highest flow area possible. Bicarb is just a preferred option for larger periodic changes to alkalinity. In either case, you can wait 20 minutes or so for it to circulate throughout the tank and test to make sure the alkalinity correction worked as intended. Again, note a hobby grade test kit isn't going to provide absolute accuracy in the initial test or after the correction, so a window of a few tenths of a DKH is acceptable. Moving on to magnesium, open the calculator and select magnesium. Again, there's a liquid option and two dry options. Again, almost everyone will use the liquid magnesium option here, which is a mix of water, magnesium chloride, and magnesium sulfate. If you're in a pinch and only had magnesium sulfate or magnesium chloride on hand, you could use the dry option with the magnesium chloride being the better of the two when used alone. Just for reference, the magnesium solution has a ton of salt in it and there are two options, a general maintenance and a two-part version. Both are the same potency, so it doesn't matter which one you use here, the calculation will be accurate for both. So we select the liquid magnesium new pharma pouch, enter our tank size of 100 gallons. They'll say our current levels are 1300 and we want 1350. And it tells us to dose 403 milliliters of magnesium solution. In this case, it's less important to pour in slowly and you don't need the highest flow area of the tank, but it won't hurt anything if you do. Again, wait 20 minutes and test. The magnesium tests are more prone to testing error and variances to the results, so be aware. I think that's because most make you precipitate all the calcium out in order to test magnesium hardness, and there are various degrees of attention put into that step. In any case, with magnesium, it's less important that you get the exact, and more important, that it's in the ballpark and stable. Hopefully with all that, we answered all your questions on using the two-part calculator. If you have other questions, shoot the BRS team a quick email, chat, or call. Even better, check out the links below for the Reef to Reef and BRS hashtag AskBRSTV Facebook group for community threads specific to today's exact conversation. Interested in some free reefing gear? Well, every Monday, Randy and I refund some preferred reefers last orders, but also just what's in your cart, so you don't even have to buy it to win. It's just one of the preferred reefer perks. Check out the link down below. As always, if you find what we do here helpful, let us know with a quick thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to be instantly notified when we release new reefing videos like this one. See you next week with the next episode of BRS TV.